Hi, I'm Laura Baggy, and I'm a PhD candidate at Duke University working in Sonka Johnson's lab. We are inside the Alvin. I went to 950 meters, which is a little over half a mile. We did something very different on this dive called midwater sampling. The Alvin has not been used in the midwater before because it can be kind of difficult to stop and maintain buoyancy at a certain depth. But our pilot Jefferson was really great at stopping at certain depths and we were able to spend a lot of time there and sample the, the animals that live at those depths. The bioluminescence was amazing. I wasn't really sure what to expect. I sort of imagined it to be like a summer night with fireflies, but it was even better than that because it seemed like we were in outer space and you could actually see the full shapes of the animals because you could see sort of the outline of the squid and the shrimp um, because they have bioluminescence um, points that go all over their bodies. We sample the animals by using something really cool called the slurp sampler and it's basically like a tiny little vacuum cleaner and it's a long hose and you, it just sucks the water column. So when you see your little shrimp animal swimming by, you just hold the hose right up to it and it goes right in and this is a great way to collect animals and keep them alive and happy because it doesn't damage them. We did bring some very cool animals back to the ship, including my favorite study animal, which is called Phrenema. The Phrenema have these really big claws, and they swim around, and they find a gelatinous salp, and they use their claws to eat the inside of the salp and kill it, and then they use the salp body, which is basically just the outside now, to use as their own little submarine home. And so the Phrenema will climb inside, and then she'll lay her eggs, and she'll raise her babies in there and they'll all hatch and then all the babies will stay there in the little empty dead body of the salp too until they grow up. Yeah, when we got to the bottom in the sub, it was really cool. So we were watching out these porthole windows to see when we were going to approach the bottom. So I kind of expected that we were going to hit the bottom, but the pilot arranges it so that you don't actually hit, you just sort of gently go down in a place just above the sea floor but you suddenly see all these crazy animals come into view, like these big fish that look like eels just swimming along the bottom, and these crabs are sort of um, sitting in a, a position where they look like they're about to fight the Alvin coming down, and, and it's really cool. Yes, yeah, so there are a lot of different uh, sampling um, needs here on, on the front of the Alvin, and all of them sit in this thing called the basket, and so there are things like um, these bio boxes, which is where we will pick up and put just um, whole organisms like crabs. We'll put them in a box and then close the box so that we can bring them to the surface unharmed. And then there are also things called push cores, where you basically just push this little tube into the sea floor and collect sediment, um, which some people on this cruise are studying. And we also carry something called Niskin bottles, which are water bottles and they can collect specific water samples over different sites. No, I wasn't alone down here in Alvin. There was another scientist with me. His name is Kevin Kosat, and he's an assistant professor at the University of Alabama. Kevin is really great because he knows the name of every animal. He's a great invertebrate zoologist, and he was able to identify all the animals that we collected. One of our target sites was on this rock wall, and when we were approaching it, it basically looked like approaching a mountain range. We just saw this sort of structure looming in the distance, but it had just, it was covered with coral and covered with animals. And this sort of gave us a sense of the scale that we were very small here in the Alvin in this very large canyon. So um, it's hard to really see exactly where you are because you're only looking at one small site. So you know from the bathymetry and the maps that we've made of the bottom of the ocean that we're in this canyon. It's a larger feature called Hydrographer's Canyon, but we're only looking at sort of small ridges of this canyon, so we weren't able to get a sense of the whole scale because we only visited small little portions of the site. Yeah. There is sort of a, a creepy factor to not knowing what's just beyond the lights of Alvin, that there could be a new crazy deep sea creature. No, I was just so excited that I didn't really have time to be afraid. In fact, uh, only one scary thing happened on the dive, and it was at the very end. Um, we were doing a push core sample, which, and when we were doing that, part of our sampling basket, which sits on the front of Alvin, just broke off something snapped and the basket fell down a little bit. It's really cool to see the animals I study 
everybody actually just swimming around doing their thing and you can see how the reflections really do give them away and you can see all the fish swimming around and when we turn on the lights and then everyone can see everyone and it was just a madhouse all these like wow. fish going crazy so, yes i am willing to go deep for my science <laughs>